Hello, welcome back to the Mythology Manifest. I'm just going to jump straight back into part two of this myth. If you haven't seen part one or the story of Medusa, I will leave a link to those videos in the below description. I hope you enjoy it. So we left off last time with Perseus bidding his mother Danae goodbye as he goes in search of the monster, the Gorgon, Medusa, to retrieve her head as part of a trick and gift set by the king of Seraphos, Pel Polydectes, who wanted to marry Danae, but could never get close to her because of Perseus. Armed with, wing with gifts from the gods, Hermes, Athena, and his father Zeus, Perseus had set off flying overseas with winged sandals that were a gift from Hermes. He was on his way to the island of Sisthene to find the witch sisters of Medusa, or in some myths they were the witch sisters of Steno and Uriel, who are not often mentioned. These witches were known as the Grey, or sometimes the Four Seeds, or in English, the Grey Sisters. Their names were Dino, Penfedro, and Enyo, and it took Perseus a few days flying to find the island. But eventually he did get there. He landed on the shore of the dead barren island holding an adamantine sword, which had been a gift from Zeus. He put on his, his uncle Hades helm of darkness and became immediately invisible. He walked across the island in search for the three sisters and eventually came to a clearing where they were grouped together. They were all hunched and incredibly ugly. They may have had immortality, but they did not have eternal youth. Perseus watched them for a while and realised that they only had one eye and one tooth between them and that they kept passing the eye around. When one of them was passing the eye to the other, Perseus intercepted it and when he was holding the eye, he said that he would return it to them if they told him directions to a new island where he could find the Hesperides, who Athena had told him had one final thing that he needed to be successful in finding and killing Medusa but their location was only known by these three witches. The Far Seeds told Perseus what he wanted to know very quickly and demanded back the eye. Knowing that if he gave it to them, they would be able to see, see again and chase him, Perseus threw the eye on the floor and left as the three witches scrambled on the ground, screaming at each other to find their one all-seeing eye. After that, Perseus flew across the ocean again to a hidden island that was not named anything other than the Island of the Hesperides, which to us I think was Crete. The Hesperides were minor goddesses who were in charge of guarding Hera's golden apples. The Queen of the Gods had many golden apples, so it makes one wonder why she needed the one from Paris in a later myth. Was it really worth causing a war over? Anyway, Perseus went to the Hesperides, who were a lot better looking than the Farseeds, and asked the women for something that would help him be successful in getting Medusa's head back to Seraphos. They handed him a bag and said that it was enchanted so that Medusa's gaze could not get through and petrify him before he got home to Seraphos, as her powers worked even in death, which I guess was a final protection from Athena. They then told him where he could find Medusa. And that, according to Hesiod and Aeschylus, was an island near Sistine called Sarpedon. Perseus thanked the Hesperides and set off straight away, once again flying with his winged sandals. It took him a few days to get to Sarpedon, but when he did, he was greeted by the sight of hundreds of statues of men whom Medusa had created. This makes her seem like a monster, but what they don't tell you is that she was cursed and hunted and went to Sarpedon to hide so that she couldn't hurt anyone, and yet she was still pursued by idiot men who wanted to kill her because of her appearance, which is something that she didn't choose herself. Anyway, Perseus snuck quietly into a cave and began looking for Medusa with his mirrored shield in front of his face. The back was also mirrored, which was lucky for him, as he saw the face of a beautiful woman with snakes for hair in the back reflection. He span round and slashed his adamantine sword through the air and through Medusa's neck, beheading her. Perseus bent down and put her head in the magical bag from the Hesperides. Just as he did, he glanced at Medusa's body and realised that she had in fact been pregnant. But the pregnancy has, had been paused when she had been cursed by Athena. Now that she was dead, Medusa was able to give birth, and from the wound in her neck shot two beings. The first was a beautiful white-winged horse called Pegasus, 
and the second was a golden gargan giant called Chrysaor, and he cried out in anger at the death of his mother, which attracted the immortal, non-petrifying sisters of Medusa, Stheno and Uriel, who charged at Perseus with bronze wings and claws, with their snake hair snapping at him. Perseus hopped onto Pegasus in hope of escaping, and kicked the horse's sides. Luckily, the winged horse liked him, and could outfly the Gorgons, and so Perseus escaped Sarpedon with his life and Medusa's head. With his mission completed, Perseus set off back to Seraphos to give his gift to Polydectes, something the king had definitely not been expecting. However, on his journey back home, he came across the Titan Atlas. Atlas told Perseus that because he had stood against the gods in the Titanomachy, they had forced him to hold up the weight of the world, or sometimes the sky, as a punishment. Perseus felt sorry for the Titan, and offered to turn him into stone so he would no longer feel the weight of his burden, but continue to hold it up. Atlas agreed, and Perseus took out the head of Medusa from the Hesperides bag, and turned Atlas to stone, and from that day forward he was known as the Atlas Mountains. Perseus then continued back to Seraphos. As he flew over the ocean, he came across a woman who was chained to a rock, crying. Perseus landed in Ethiopia and went to see King Cep Cepheus and his queen, Cassiopeia. The king and queen told Perseus that the maiden chained to the rock was their daughter Andromeda, and that she was chained there because the queen's boastfulness had offended the god Poseidon and, more importantly, his wife, Amphitrite. As a punishment for her vain words, Poseidon flooded Ethiopia and was sending a horrible sea monster to destroy the city. The king told Perseus that the Oracle of Amnon had told the king and queen that the only way things would go back to normal is if they sacrificed their only daughter Andromeda to be eaten by the sea monster. With the sea monster nearing to kill Andromeda, Perseus flew to Andromeda's side and killed the beast using Medusa's head saving Ethiopia and Andromeda. And the gods just let this happen with no further consequences, which I find quite surprising, as usually they wouldn't let go of such powerful vendettas. As a thanks for saving them, the king and queen let Perseus marry their daughter. Invitations were set, sent out far and wide. This all would have been fine, but Andromeda was already promised to another, called Phineas, and her want-to-be husband was not about to let her marry another without a fight. The day of the wedding came, and one particular guest to mention was the king of Argos, Acreus, or Acrisius. If you remember from my first video, that was the maternal grandfather of Perseus who had cast them out. Well, during this wedding, Phineas saw his window of opportunity to marry Andromeda closing, so he crashed the wedding. Phineas tried to attack Perseus, but Perseus closed his eyes and removed Medusa's head from the safekeeping of the magical bag. He then turned Phineas into stone, and when Perseus opened his eyes, he saw that he had not only turned Phineas into stone, but all of the guests that had been standing beside him, including Acrisius, King of Argos, so he had not been able to defeat the prophecy as he believed he would be able to. Perseus apologised to the king and the queen for the mess he had made and left Ethiopia with his new bride in his arms. Perseus and Andromeda flew back to Seraphos on Pegasus and arrived just in time. Polydectes was just about to force Danae into marriage and they all believed Perseus was dead because he had been away for so long. Perseus heard the news that his mother was being forced into marriage to the king and so he crashed the wedding, surprising everyone especially Polydectes. When Perseus arrived, he announced to the king that he had his wedding present, and then Perseus removed the severed head of Medusa from the bag, told everyone else to look away, and turned Polydectes to stone, freeing his mother from her forced marriage. Perseus then handed over Seraphos to a different member of the royal family. He told his mother of his wedding to Andromeda, and that he had accidentally killed the king of Argos. Danae laughed at to Perseus's surprise and explained that Acrisius had been her father who left her to die in a box and that they could now return to Argos to rule and so they did. Perseus gave back his gifts from the gods and gave Athena the head of Medusa which she then placed on a shield called the Aegis. 
Perseus and Andromeda ruled Argos for many years, having seven sons. Perseus, Alceus, Helios, Mestor, Stenelius, Electrion, and Cyrinus, and two daughters, Gargophone and Artichecotho. And that is where this myth ends. It was a long one, which I will summarise in mini-myths. If you liked these videos, please like, comment, or subscribe, or follow the channel's Twitter, which I have left a link to in the description. Thanks for helping me keep classics alive. My next few videos will be shorter. I will see you next time on the Mythology Manifest.